Okay, so um, there's a trend that's been happening for a while. One went viral, and I'm so excited about um, you know her having the courage to tell her story, and also um, her getting peace and her just due. Girl is getting double for her trouble, and I'm so happy for her. Um, and you know, watching people come out like this has given me the courage to do the same. Uh, I was in the process of writing a book called Record of Wrong. Um, it got a little interrupted. I'm still working on it. But I've been saying for at least at least 10 years, I need to tell my story. I need to tell my story. Because when I tell friends or people hear about just little bits and pieces of chapters, they're always like, girl, this is unbelievable. Your whole life is a movie, girl. But I have been ashamed. I've been afraid. But after this last relationship... Um, I don't care anymore. Uh, I really don't care. I was ashamed still. I was afraid to come out and just say it all because there was still a part of me that was so male identified and centered. I did not want to hurt my chances of not being able to find a good man or maybe some good man finally coming to rescue me and my kids and all that. And I don't care who doesn't want me anymore because I don't want any of y'all I don't want I, I don't want it I don't I don't I have uh, every bad uh every peril I've had every setback every trauma all the pain um the disappointment the inconsistencies just everything that you could think of that is hurtful that I've experienced in life has all been connected to a relationship that I've had with some man. I don't have any more hope anymore. I don't care anymore about, you know, um, trying to attract a good one because the ones that I even thought were good and even with this last relationship, I felt like, oh, I finally, finally got a good one. I had to kiss and I made all these posts about how I've never been loved like this before. And it was true. And how I had to kiss so many frogs to get with this one. And it was true. Um, a lot of it was. But I really, really thought, oh, this is it. This is it. And um, I was once again, continually let down and getting the least uh, from somebody that I was doing the most for. Um, he was just a more polished turd. Uh, I'm grateful for a lot of that experience because, um, you know, as far as my life is concerned, maybe it's true. Um, so I'm going to name this um, this thought, this recurring thought that I've had, um, that it was going to be a book. But because of just being a single mother of four, uh, even when I was married with, with three and then four, I was still a single mother. Um, I just haven't had time to sit and write. So I'm gonna talk about it. Um, there's this thought, there was a book that I wanted to write before Record of Wrong and it was called Addicted to Monsters. Um, so that's what I'm gonna call this, Addicted to Monsters. And uh, I'm gonna get as much as I can out tonight. And then from here, uh, whenever I have a chance to sit in front of the phone again on TikTok, I'll just go 10 minute by 10 minute until I've got it all done. Uh, why am I doing this? Growing up in the church, I am a pastor slash bishop's daughter, um, granddaughter times two as well, and uh, preacher pastor's niece, and I'm even a uh, ex pastor's wife. And I got to hear a whole lot of church sayings, and I, this may even be a scripture I don't remember, but there's this thing that's said in a lot of um, in church, a lot of at least the churches I I spent most of my life in. Um, that we are overcome by two things. One, if you go to church, you know the first part, and I'm not going to say that because I'm not trying to proselytize any of you, um, but we'll say by a, a certain sacrifice. Um, and two, by the word of our testimony. I believe that. I believe that part so hard that you are overcome by the word of your testimony. Um, and I've noticed that once I, little by little, started to forget just be like I don't care how it hits you 
when I tell my truth? Why am I protecting other people's feelings instead of just telling my truth so that I can be overcome and I can help other people overcome? I'm doing this for my three daughters and my one son. I'm also doing this for me and I'm doing it for any of you that will hear this story and, um, and learn something or maybe uh, allow yourself to, to grab a hold of some freedom as a result of this. Um, yeah, it's cathartic. Um, and we need to start holding people accountable. Tell the truth. Tell on these people. Tell on these people. And if they don't like the way they sound in your story, then guess what? You should have been a better freaking character, okay? All I'm going to tell is the pure, unadulterated truth. Um, and it feels good to just not care. A lot of you are going to dog me, clown me, laugh. Um, you know, say things that, that some people have said behind closed doors when I started to tell my truth a little bit. Why are you going to do him like that? Why are you going to put him out there like that? Again, if you don't like the way you sound and my story, when I tell the truth about it, then perhaps you should have decided to be a better character. All right. So, um, again, I said that, um, we turn this TV down. A lot of the just really my darkest moments uh, in life and my hardest moments have all been because of my dependency, my very unhealthy dependency um, on a man. And it has been tied to them having way too much control over my mind, my will, my emotions, my body, my spirit. Um, and it starts with my father because I was trained to be that way. Um, so we're going to start there. Chapter one is all about dad. It's all about my father. I'm not sure how many parts this is going to be. Um, I'm going to speak from, from memory and uh, uh, let the chips fall where they may. And whatever comes out, it comes out. Um, but it is past time for me to talk about it. Uh, so... Um, I will also say this, that if you know who I am, if you know who my family is, if you know who my father is, leave them alone, okay? What's done is done. Uh, my father has suffered. He has been suffering over these past couple of years. Maybe God is dealing with him. I don't know. I haven't seen him in a couple of years. I have not had a real conversation with him in almost probably a year, maybe a little over, besides a couple of you know, hi, how you doings? Because maybe I was on the phone with my mom and he was in the background um, and she tried to get us to interact. Um, I decided to exit my family last year. I got tired. I got tired of a lot of things. Um, I've never felt welcome in my family. I've never felt valued. I've always felt like the black sheep, the scapegoat, um, you know, the dark child, the wayward child. None of them have ever asked me my truth. They've never asked me if I'm okay. They've never, ever asked me um, what happened to you. They have always listened to whatever the stories have been from other people, and they have gossiped about me and never supported a thing. <sighs> um, so, uh, where do I begin? So, like I said, I am a bishop's daughter, and my relationship with my father has been a very tumultuous one. Uh, he's been kicking me out since fifth grade. And I used to joke about it like it's funny, but you know, on the other end of comedy is tragedy. That's the truth. Um, I moved back home to New Jersey in 2019 and I'm 40. I've been living in this house for five years, the same place. This is the longest I have ever been in one place my entire life. I'm 40. My entire life, I've never been in one home, one place, this long. Five years. Please let that sink in. All right, um, I can tell that I'm getting up on 10 minutes, and that's kind of like the time frame for this. So um, I'm going to stop it here, and I'm going to go ahead and go to part two.